Welcome to Be Encouraged. Today I have with me again Joy. Welcome, Joy. Nice to be here always. And how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Today we're going to talk about something I think is exciting. We're going to talk about a phrase that has become popular and yet people misunderstand the phrase born again. You ever hear the phrase born again? Mm -hmm. Born again. You know that one in three Americans claim to be born again? That's a lot, isn't That's it? That's a lot. Now, I, I don't know if it's true or not, but one in three claim that they're born again. What does it mean to become born again? You, you see religious programs, you see uh, even non-Christian uh, uh, non uh, rock stars and singers are doing songs called Born Again. And uh, uh, what does it really mean? And I think there's a verse that you could read for us, a section in the Bible, John 3, 1 to 17, mm -hmm. is a very famous story in the Bible, some of the most famous verses in the New Testament. And can you read that from, to us from the New King okay, James Version? Okay, you want me to read John 3, verses 1 to 17, yes, right? Yes, please. 1 to 17. Here you go. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, th that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify of what we have seen, and you do, not, you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, and that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Great words, isn't it? It is. Well, there's a phrase in here. Now, here comes Nicodemus, which was a very religious guy. Mm -hmm. And he comes, Joe, you know, and he says to Jesus, you know, he wants to know truth. And Jesus talks about you need to be born again. Can you imagine someone saying be born again? I says, How do, what do I got to do? Get my mama's womb again, womb again and come <laughs> out? Well, well, Jesus says, don't you understand? And, and this term born again has been degraded in our, our society. People make fun of it. But all through church history, it's been a key word. I was studying even how the early church fathers of year 100, mm -hmm. 200, and 300 today, they constantly used the term born again because it was a good word to describe what it meant to be in a relationship with God. 
Now, there's other words in the New Testament. You can use those too. I have some great words. Maybe you can think of some other words mm -hmm. for knowing God. There's conversion. Uh -huh. you think, can you think of any other one? Regeneration. A changed life. A changed life. A new creation. Yes. I like the word adoption. Uh-huh. That's a good one. But born again brings an edge to it. It's very important. And that edge is being that, that Nicodemus, he knew the law. He, if we went to church today, Very learned men, he knew right? to stand up, sit down, mm -hmm. stand up, sit down. He knew the Bible, the Old Testament, you know, back and forth. He memorized it. And Jesus was saying, what your relationship with God is not going to be based on what you can do. None of that will work. Mm -hmm. It's based on a new birthing process. You need to be born in the Spirit. You need to be born of God. Let me read it in the Amplified. And okay. the Amplified is a translation that brings out some of the nuances in, in the, the Greek here. And it says this, as Jesus answered him and answered him, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, that unless a person is born again, anew from above, he cannot see. That means to know, be acquainted with, and experience the kingdom. We cannot know God's kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. We can't know his peace. We can't know his joy mm -hmm. without right. being born again. That's right. Many times, you know, um, before I really got born again, you know, um, there's so many things, uh, uh, spiritual truth, that in my natural mind, I cannot understand. And yet it's been stated simply, and yet I cannot understand it. You know, it just, it, it, it just it's like my mi mind cannot just grab what, 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 what the scripture is saying. But when I got born again, like you said, Pastor Jim, you know, then suddenly the, 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 the scripture uh, begins to speak to me in, in a new form, in a new life. Like it's beginning, it's, it be, I, I, I begin to understand it now. Well, you know, I was born in Santa Barbara, California. Now, I love my mom and dad, and if they listen to this, <laughs> hi, mom, hi, dad, I love you, but you must have been brain dead, because I was born in Santa Barbara, California, and when I was two years old, they moved to Duluth, Minnesota. Now, I don't know, that's, that's that, I would have chosen to stay in Santa Barbara. But anyway, they probably just like the. Cold oh, they weather. like it. My mm -hmm. mom loves the they cold. They love up the there. cold they, weather. She loves it, and she's so sweet. But anyway, what happened was is that 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 someone can come up to me and they could say, "Where were you born, Jim?" And I'd say, "I was born in Santa Barbara, and I was born in Duluth." Uh huh. I say, "What? Make up your mind. Which one? Were you born in Santa Barbara, <laughs> or were you born in Duluth?" I was born in both of them. You know, I, I was born in Santa Barbara, and I was born in Duluth. You see, because I was born, my mama, in Santa Barbara, you know, and I, I actually played with the original dog, Lassie, and my dad has photos, and, but then we moved to the frozen wastelands of Duluth, Minnesota, and I found Jesus, and I became born again. I was born twice. Uh -huh. Now, how can you explain that? You had a second birth, in a sense, huh? Yeah. What's that mean? Well, uh, for me, being born again is uh, when you're given a fresh start, you know. And, and this fresh start or new beginning or new life is found in Christ Jesus. You know, when you get to know Him and accepted Him as your personal Lord and Savior. And then, then you, 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 you see your worth and your value in Christ Jesus. And you begin to live your life from hence on, from the time you surrendered your life to to God, you surrender, I mean, you, you, you start to live your life according to how you, th you think or you, you sense the Holy Spirit wants you to live your life. The, one of the reasons, Joy, that it says born again is that we are, not, we are not saved. We are not born again by our own effort. By our own works. Nicodemus had all the own efforts. If anyone could be saved by his own efforts mm -hmm. with Nicodemus, he was not a bad man and yes. he knew the law. But what happens is, is that nothing that we do, we could go to church every day of your life. You can memorize the Bible. That doesn't make you born again. Well, the reason that Jesus used this illustration, well, let's, let's back up. Okay. Remember when Adam and Eve uh, lived okay. and, and they were given a life, the tree of life. And God said to Adam and Eve, it says, the day you sin, you shall die. Mm -hmm. Well. When Eve offered Adam the apple, 
we don't know if it was an apple or not, you know, but did they die? Not physically. It was not a physical death. But death came in, didn't but it? death came in. How do we know that? Because instantly, fear came in. Yes. Instantly, guilt came in. Instantly, because God they used to have fellowship with God. You know, man used to have harmony with God, and they'd walk together. That was broken. And what happened was, is God came and said, where are you, Adam? Mm -hmm. Adam died spiritually that day. Yes, and the fellowship that he has with the Lord was you know, broken. Was broken. Now, so that's the card. Now, when Jesus says you're born again, was that which was destroyed in the garden was made alive again mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ. Amen. What he did is he gave us life. That's right. And, and so what we needed to do, number one, we couldn't rely on our own effort. That's right. It had to be done spiritually. Mm -hmm. Adam couldn't come back and say, okay, uh, I'll build you a nice house, God, and I'll go to church That's every right. day, and then we'll make things, patch things up. No amount of good works. No amount, it had to be the death of Jesus Christ. And the resurrection, not just the death, but his resurrection of Jesus Christ. They did it. Now, let me ask you a question. How were you born again? Well, that's really an interesting story. I grew up in a Christian family. You know, I grew up, you know, exposed with uh, being in the church and being involved in the, uh, you know, the life of a church. Being in the choir, being in the Sunday school, uh, active in all my life, really. But then, you know... When I was in college, when I was in college, I was studying in a different city. I was, uh, I was, it was during a lunch break. Somebody came to me with the four spiritual laws. I have heard the four spiritual laws before. You know, I have seen the tracks before. But that day, this girl came to me and said, you know, and shared to me the four spiritual laws. Do you know the Lord? Do you know the Lord, accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? At that point in time, I, I just made a, a commitment. I surrendered my life to the Lord afresh. And I believe that was, it was at that point that I truly got born again and really came into a, a real understanding of what it is to be in relationship with Christ Jesus. And that was like I was first year in college, but all my life, I sang in the choir, I, I was in church every Sunday and every other day that we have activities. But it was only when I have that uh, sincere, you know, commitment of my life to the Lord, that I would say was the time that I was truly born again. What happens is you just don't change your philosophy. There's a, there's a change, there's a transformation From of nature. From within, yes. That's the difference, there's a transformation of nature. Mm -hmm. Because me, I was brought up in a church like you. And in the, it was in Duluth, Minnesota, so I used to call it a cold church but because it was cold there. Okay. But they were nice people. But uh, we used to say it was so cold you could ice skate down the aisle. To me, that meant that the meetings were boring. You know, I, I used to sit and count the tiles on the ceiling. That's how excited I was. And, but I thought that, okay, I'll, I'll go to heaven because I went to, I put in my time at church. Mm -hmm. I, I served my time. You're a good person. I'm a, well, I wouldn't think I was so good, oh, you didn't but, you know, but, <laughs> but anyway, I kept getting in trouble. But what happened was is, is that, that, that I realized one day that I didn't know God. And I realized one day that, that if I was going to go into eternity, I would go empty-handed. I would go without, you know, knowing Jesus Christ. And so uh, what I did is I asked, I said, Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me my sins, and, and I want to be born again. What it was was I became a new creation, creation. the Bible says. Right. I became a new person. Um, the old Jim had passed away, a new Jim came. And of course, at the first day, I didn't feel any different. Uh, sometimes we, we wait for emotion. But I look back over my life mm -hmm. about two, three weeks later, and then I had changed. Jesus said it was like a mustard seed. The kingdom of God begins to grow and grow. And today it's grown much bigger. And what happens is it begins growing in that divine nature that God has planted in us by that, that, that new creation has been growing every day. Yeah, what, what, while you're talking just now, Pastor Jim, what, in the Philippines, we have a lot of pawn shops, you know, where you bring your jewelries. If you're hard, hard in cash or you, you need, you know, quick money, you bring a piece of jewelry or maybe some, 
maybe an, a VCR or something of value, and then you, you bring it in and they will pay, I mean, give you money for it, and then you're given a certain amount of time to redeem it, mm -hmm. you know? And what you were when you were talking just now, what I came to me is I've been redeemed in a sense because, um, you know, I, I realize I am sinful, you know, and I have fallen short of the glory of God. And, but because of the blood of Jesus, you know, He has redeemed me and He has given me new life in Him. So it's the same, it's the same analogy or picture that I can think of, you know, that something precious, like a, a stone or a ring or something, and that's me. I'm precious in the eyes of God. And then, but then I, I put my, 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 I brought my life and wasted my life probably in some activities or some things that is not good, you know. But God has, has brought me for a price, you know, and redeemed me and has given me new life in Him. So I have now an opportunity to have a new life, a changed life from within because the Holy Spirit is in my life. And if you're listening here today, what we need to, to explain here is exactly when Jesus says you must be born again, unless you're born again, you don't understand the kingdom of God. You don't mm. see the kingdom of God. You, you may hear us talk about this yes. and say, what are those two people talking about? That's right. But because you see that Adamic nature, we call it, that old nature that, that, that had died, that's why Jesus says you have to be born of the spirit. You're not only born of your mother, mm -hmm. you're born of the spirit. And when we're born of the Spirit, all of a sudden, things light up. We begin to understand His kingdom, understand His love, understand that He cares for us, understand that He will never leave us or forsake us. There's things that come into our life. It opens up every day. It grows and grows mm -hmm. and grows. Now, if you're listening here today, Let's, let's go back to the, 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 the born-again concept here. Remember I told you that Nicodemus, he had all the religious angles covered. And like I said, he was probably a good man. And we see later in his life, you know, he, he tried to help. But the thing that he did not have was a personal experience with Jesus. If you're listening here and you say, but Jim, I go to church, I go to mass, I go to synagogue, I go here, I, 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 I uh, offer things in my life to God, I, I give to the poor. Well, you know, it doesn't matter, even though it's commendable that you do those things. Are you born again? How do I know if I'm born again? Well, the Bible says that the Spirit bears witness to our spirit that we belong to God. And how do we get that witness? We get that witness by asking Him into our life. What we do is we, we come to Jesus and we say, Lord, I need to be born again. I need to be born of the Spirit. And then He will lead us. How does one become born again, Joy? Just one simple, sincere prayer is all it takes. But what's included in that prayer? And uh, all it takes is uh, what included in that prayer is to ask for forgiveness you know, for all our sins and shortcoming and just opening up our hearts and accepting Jesus to reign and to rule over our, our lives. And to and, confess Him as Lord. And to confess Him as Lord of yes. our lives. Because the Bible says with a mouth, confession confess, is made unto yeah. salvation. That's right. That we need, we accept Him. There's no such thing as a secret, Christian. No. Really. Because um, there's a confession that's made that's in our right. lives. And when we experience the goodness of God in our life daily, when we experience His goodness, I mean, we cannot help but testify of His goodness. Yes. We cannot help but say, hallelujah, praise the Lord, or praise God, He's so good, you know. I mean, we can, there's no such thing as secret Christian. I mean, if you're a real born-again Christian, no way you can keep your faith a secret. It kind of spills out. Yes. I, I just love watching, uh, reading uh, sometimes Sunday in B.C. Everybody B.C. in the B.C., yes, the newspaper. In, yeah, the in, in the Sundays, you yep. know, that little caveman, mm -hmm. B.C. And one day, I think that, there's, there's, I don't forget what they call her, the fat lady, uh -huh. the, the fat cave woman, comes up to him and says, can you keep a secret? And he says, yeah. Are you sure? Okay. And then he says, she whispers in his ear, Jesus loves you. In the next five or six <laughs> cartoon screens, he's, you know how they draw his face. He's going, his trying to face control himself. He's trying to, and finally he says, I can't do it. 
I got to tell somebody. And he goes, Jesus loves me. <laughs> well, that's what happens when God's kingdom comes in our life. You know, it's just something you're born again. You're, you're a new member of a new family. That's right. And in that family, you just can't keep quiet. That's right. It's too good. <laughs> and that's what God does. He gives it so good. Another point, when we're being born again, it's such a good illustration because you begin as a baby. You don't turn into super saint. Yep. Right? You begin as a baby. So when you ask Jesus into your heart, when you say, like if you're listening today and you ask God in your heart, you don't begin all of a sudden as mature and fully grown. I see many babies in my life. I've never seen them grow overnight. That's right. You have to go through a process. Yeah, they start with a bottle. I never saw the hospital serve a new baby steak and eggs. What happens if that they do that? They die. Constipation and a lot more Some serious, die even, serious right? effects, you know? Yeah, i never seen it. I mean, I think that they should start serving pizzas to the new babies in the uh, delivery room. Don't you think so? <laughs> the nurse will eat it. Well, when they get older, they love the pizza, don't That's they? That's right. But the thing is, if you begin in God, you begin as a baby. And as you begin as a baby, you need to feed on the Word of God. That's right. And you're going to find out that the, you know, this body needs good things. I mean, you and I, we need to have some good things, like pizza. You know? <laughs> but, but as we're born again, our body will start to need new things because there's a new creation. We need the Word of God. That's right. We need fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. And we need fellowship with other Christians. So if you give your heart to Jesus Christ here and you pray with us as we're going to pray in a few minutes, take time to read the Word. That's take right. time to fellowship with God and find a church that honors Jesus Christ, one that believes in being born again. You hear what I said? One that believes in being born again. Because that's very important. All through church history, all the church fathers, you read the saints and, uh, of the past, every one made an emphasis that we need to be born again, the ones that were really born of God. So anyway, that's great, Joy. Yes, and it's important also, like Pastor said, to find a fellowship of believers who would help you. You know, as you grow, as, as we were, remember when you were teenagers or where you were like 10, 11, 12 years old, nat naturally like, you know, uh, in the, your natural years, you make a lot of mistakes or sometimes you, you don't know a lot of things. So it's important to have, to surround yourself with a group of uh, believers uh, who would encourage you, who would help you, who would, who would support you, who would give, you know, encouraging words and guidance. Because we need that in our life, especially yes. when we're young Christians, when we're still young Christians. That's right. We like to surround people in our church with love. That's right. Let me ask you today. We got a lot of good time left mm -hmm. here. Let me ask you, are you born again? I'm not asking, do you go to church? Are you born again? One question I ask people, and you know, I don't hit people over the head, not my style, but I still, people say, ask me, you know, well, I'm not sure. Yes. I say, if you were gonna die right now, let's say that you, you died right now, you never know. My, my sister, I love my sister, she's the youngest of, of four boys, and she died suddenly last week. Mm -hmm. They found her, they found that she had a, a, a brain, they believe it's a brain aneurysm, and, and she has a 17-year-old girl, Hannah, and suddenly she's gone. She knew the Lord, she's with mm. Jesus right now. Uh, I tried to get a hold of her the last couple of weeks, she was in church, that was mm -hmm. a good sign. Yeah. But you never know, Jesus says we never know our time in this life. If you were gonna be like my sister Barbara, and something suddenly happened to you today, would you be ready to meet God? You know, I, 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 even Christians sometimes, I believe, are like college students. You ever, when you went to college, do you ever cram for an exam? Oh, yes. And sometimes people's attitude is, well, I'll cram for the final exam in heaven when I get close. You know, and you see people when they start, you know, they finally have cancer or sickness and the doctor says things, oh, I got to cram to get ready for God. 
it's too late often to cram then. You got to give your heart to Jesus now and let that light grow. That doesn't mean that God will not save you in the last minute. He's done that many, many times. But there's so much of life that you miss. And there's so much peace and so much regret when you discover all the wonderfulness of what it means to be born again. So let me come back to my question. Are you born again? The good news is you can be today. You should be able to say, yes, Jim, I am born again. You may use other terms. You may terms as, yes, I am saved. Yes, I am converted. Yes, I'm a new creation. But, it's just, but you know that you are. You know that you belong to God. Many people say, if I die, I hope I go to heaven. Yes. You can know. The Bible says that you, when you are born again, your name is written mm -hmm. in the book of life. And my question is, is your name written in the book of life today? We're going to pray. And if you do not know Jesus Christ, I invite you to pray together with Joy and I. And I invite you to be sincere. This might be the most important minute of your life, so don't touch that dial. Right now, the decision you make are like strings that will vibrate through eternity. What you decide, you may listen to me right now, and you say, I'm not going to make a decision. You are making a decision. You're going to make a decision either to accept this word, or you're going to make an decision to put it off and say no. It's like well, sometimes when you vote for something, they say, if you don't vote, it's a no. Well, this is exactly, if you say, I'll wait, it's a no. Let me encourage you to say yes right now and ask Jesus Christ in your heart. I just sense in my spirit that some of you listening here today that this message is timely and God wants you to get right with him today. The Bible says today, today we should respond to God. Today, lest we harden our hearts. So let's Amen. pray and you pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come before you as a sinner. I come before you as someone who has made mistakes and missed and gone my own way. And I want to be born again. I ask you to forgive me my sins. I ask you to cleanse my sins. I ask you to, to uh, receive me. And I desire to make you Lord in my life. I ask you right now, come into my heart. You said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You said, Lord, that if any man opens a door, you'll come in. Lord, I open my heart's door to you, and I ask you to come into my, my life. And I, from this moment on, I declare you as Lord. And Lord, I desire to be born again, and I receive that relationship with you. I receive it right now. And Lord, I confess you is my Savior. I confess you is my Lord. Amen. And Lord, from this moment on and through all eternity, I will live with you because you've promised me that I'm part of your family now and I receive you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's many ways to pray Amen. that prayer. That's just one. Call this number on the screen. If you prayed that prayer, we'd like to hear from you. Um, or go to a church. You don't need to call us if you belong to a Bible-believing, uh, born-again church. Go to the pastor. Go to the leaders and say, I prayed that prayer. Anyway, we don't have much time left. But thank you for today, Joy. Thank you for tuning in with us and just, you know, just being encouraged, hopefully, by the Word today. Be encouraged.